Hi, this is Brad from Pro Wrestling Junkies, and welcome to another episode of Toilet Side Wrestling Talk. Today's guest hails from the planet Earth, which is very convenient, but specifically Quebec, Canada. Began wrestling in 2006 and was trained by Boris Kozlov and Ryan Donovan. Has worked in Canada, the United States, Japan, United Kingdom, and Germany, and has worked in such promotions as Capital City Championship Combat, CZW, Battle War Pro Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, IWS, Over the Top Wrestling, North Shore Pro Wrestling, and Progress, just to name a few. He's held the DDT Ironman Heavy Metal Championship, the IWS World Heavyweight Championship, he's held the C4 Championship, and has also held the C4 Tag Team Championships with Kevin Steen. Along the way, he's shared the ring with the likes of Walter, Matt Riddle, Kenny Omega, Will Ospreay, Brian Cage, Keith Lee, just to name a few. 2020, PWI ranked him in their top 500 list, coming in at 295. So let's welcome today's guest, black belt in Taekwondo, and perhaps my one day bodyguard, Speedball Mike Bailey. Mike, how are you? I'm well. Wow. So I'm really impressed with that uh, intro package. Really, a lot of work went into that. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, it's 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 fun though going through. Like, I mean, there's tons of material. Um, so it, it's it's always fun. And it's I always like it always ends up being like ten minutes long. I have to trim it down to a minute. You know, <laughs> never. How are you today? I'm very well. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. Um, where are you? I am in Montreal right now. Okay. And um, so I was like, you've worked a crazy amount from like 2014 on. So has this last year thrown you off completely with the pandemic? Well, yeah, but I think it's thrown absolutely everyone off, right? Yeah, I would say I would say so. People <laughs> who actually leave their homes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's like I... There's very, very few people that this hasn't just completely changed their way of life and everything about what they do. So, yeah, yeah, it has. But I feel like that's normal now somehow. Yeah. So have you had like um, more time away for like on your hands to like to do stuff than, you know, you previously did obviously wrestling. Like, have you what have you been doing to fill in your time? So the one thing that I've been able to focus like more on like full time on mm-hmm. that I never got the chance to before is really teaching. Okay. And teaching wrestling. Um I, like I would do it whenever I had the the chance. I used to do with the mostly with the IWS school in Montreal. Mm-hmm. Um I've done loads of like wrestling seminars all around the world. But uh like I used to do those training camps. Mm-hmm. Like just three, four days of like really intense training sure. at the school whenever I was in Canada because it would never be for very long. And mm-hmm. usually I would have like, I'd be here for a month and then I'd have three bookings a week on every weekend and whenever. So I wouldn't really have time. Uh-huh. But like I I came here around the, I came back to Canada in the end of 2019. Okay. Which was supposed to be like for like less than a month, mm-hmm. but then my I was supposed to go to Japan after that the next month, mm-hmm. but my my the paperwork for my visa, uh-huh. my Japanese visa application got lost in the mail. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, but I was like, that's okay, you know, I'm gonna be able to stay in Canada and teach for two months. Okay, so that's gonna be all right. I'm missing this whole Japan tour, which really really sucks, obviously, but I'll be here. You know, I'll be in Canada for an extra month, I told myself at the beginning of 2020. An extra month. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, but then, like, 
then I was able to go and do a 16 karat tournament in Germany. Mm-hmm. And then, then I went to Japan right as just everything was starting and the whole world was shutting down. And then I was, was it- there for a while and then I came back here and like, I've been mostly teaching like regularly since, except you know a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. where like it's been normal classes and then only online classes and then physical classes, but fully masked precautions mm-hmm. and no physical contact. And then we're able to ease into physical contact, but only pods. And then it was brought back down to no physical contact and masks. Oh, no. And now we're back to just fully online. And I'm, I'm waiting and for it, it to be and, Is it so hard to like be able to teach like that? Keep, I mean, in so many different environments, you I know, mean, for online or in person or you know, distanced in person. So, I, like, it's forced me to focus on different aspects, right? Like, there's mm-hmm. a, there's a, like, of course, uh, I have a martial arts background, and I've done mm-hmm. as well. Like, not like. I, I don't I've never done gymnastics in the proper sense, but I mm-hmm. like I can move around and I can flip around and all that and I can sure. teach that fairly well. And I've been able to teach a lot more of that than I would be able to otherwise because I'd be busy teaching, you know, actual wrestling. Yeah, and that's yeah. You do on your own. Um, but the most like fascinating part of teaching in this in this case is that there's no shows going around right now. And mm-hmm. normally if you have like wrestling students like some they get to a certain level and it's like okay now it's time to start on shows which a lot of the people that i have that started training with me either like in the beginning of last year or shortly before Mm -hmm. like a few of them would have been ready now to start performing on shows but they're not because there are no shows available so like it's a very weird place to be right now for them where i know there's a lot of wrestlers that like used to be really good and used to be on top and like best wrestlers in in Quebec but they haven't like they haven't been wrestling they've hardly been training they've had to switch their priorities and then when wrestling starts up again if they choose to start wrestling then it might be difficult for them to readjust and then there's my students that weren't wrestling at all and now b- before oh shows God. are coming back they've been training and they've been getting ready and they were ready and we're still working even harder so hopefully uh-huh. like it's a weird place for them to be because it's hard to train right now, but the payoff is going to be just so much more. Yeah, because yeah. Because they're going to have to, like, they're going to have extra time spent on training and they're going to be really ready when things Yeah, start. and they can have, like, a little bit of higher expectations, you know, because they will have, all, you know, that experience, that right. extra experience. Have Do you go to the gym every day or is your workout teaching? Uh well gyms are closed right now and have okay. been for oh really yeah, yeah. but so uh, no, can I know still go to gyms so where are you located you're in the Maritimes I'm, I'm in uh I'm in like about two and a half hours south of Chicago oh oh I thought you were the other way I thought CST okay you know that makes sense <laughs> right um okay so you guys can't go to gyms so so what is your yeah, workout. yeah, no, no. We've been we've been shut. Gyms have been shut down for a while now, which I don't necessarily agree with. Uh-huh. Uh, I understand all the precautions, but I think this was sure. a bit too far. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, so that's been a thing too. Like gyms fully closed, and then they opened up again, and then restrictions, then more restrictions, and now they're closed. And we're just waiting for them to open up again. But I like so that's that's one thing that's good. I figured out how to train at home very well. Okay, and I like the way i felt about like oh my god there's no gym what am i gonna do how am i gonna work out and stay in shape like if i knew then what i know now about training at home i would have been a lot less worried about it oh yeah i I figured out how to do that and like there's a lot of like i don't know if you go to the gym but if you do like there's a lot of things that you train this way because it it, like it's functional in a gym like sure, I've adapt, yeah. like I've, I've gone from you know normal normal gym training. You pick your one exercise and you do a set, and then you mm-hmm. rest, and then you do a set, and then you rest. But like if I'm at home, I don't have to wait because I can use all the pieces of yeah. exercise at once because they're all mine. So I've yeah, like adapted yeah. to circuit training a lot more. Oh, and okay. Like I'm in a gym, I'm focused. There's people around. I can't just slack off. But if I'm at home and I'm taking very long between sets. Uh-huh. Then I'm just gonna get distracted and start doing th- something else and move the focus to that completely, and then realize, oh no, my last set was 30 minutes ago. Gotta do. 
So well, I found I'll take that a like nap now and yeah, no, exactly. I'm watching this show. Hold on, I'm, I'll do my set afterwards. Um, so like I've gone completely the other way, and I have like I do like specific circuit training, like 20 minutes, no breaks, just rotating the exercise, and then I yeah. do the complete opposite of that, which is just like uh, every time I never walk under my pull up bar without doing a set. Okay. <laughs> So it probably adds up to a, even yeah, more yeah, sets. Totally. Than, like the exercises are limited, and it's you know not as easy, like to to have like variations in in your training. But it's still, I end up doing as much as I would at a gym. Do you go or what? What's the weather like this time of year in Montreal, temperature it's, wise? It's uh, hold on, I need a. Uh, it's minus fourteen degrees Celsius today. Oh my which god! Which I should probably Google minus fourteen. I know the equation is like my, minus 32 divided by 2. Uh, minus 14 is 7 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my God. So are you, you're not like going, you're not like going running or anything outside? <laughs> no. No, I, I don't, jogging is not really an option at this time of the year. I wish it was. Kill you. <laughs> right? So in fact, let me just go on the record saying I don't I don't suggest this. I don't want it coming back to me like I'm starting this guy Brad. He said got me got the idea of me running outside and then it kills you. I don't want that responsibility. <laughs> um, okay, let's go back uh, years ago. When, and so you're uh, you you're a black belt in taekwondo. Yep, fourth degree black belt. Okay, so when when did martial arts come into the? Did martial arts come in first before wrestling? Or vice versa. So martial arts came in way after wrestling. I started, really? yeah, I started when I was like eleven or twelve, and I started watching wrestling, and then it, like when I was seven, and then okay. immediately I started doing wrestling, uh, mostly with my brother and some friends, and then uh -huh. like, in the house, I, in the house, yeah, yeah. And we took our, we had mattresses, we had bunk beds, and we just took the mattresses oh, off onto God. the floor. And then we would use the top of the bunk bed as a top rope for. Were your parents like thing. in constant fear? No. So, um, no, because like I was seven and my brother was like nine or something. Um, yeah. Okay. We, we were just, we were just, we had that. We were crazy. Yeah. It's not like you're did, jumping did, off 15 feet down, you know, down or anything. But yeah. Um, it, but it's not like we went from being. Little, little angels <laughs> who never fought and never got themselves in trouble and never mm -hmm. like jumped off of things anyways to pro wrestling. No, we were we were already doing 90% of it. It just became a thing now, an actual art yeah, form totally. that is just general being a, a brat. So did you say to yourself, I can't be a wrestler now, but I could study martial arts? So sort of. Um, it was kind of random. It, like when I started Taekwondo, and this is where I go into a whole tangent about doing martial arts. Um, when I started Taekwondo, it was really only because I had a friend that was like, oh, I'm, I'm doing Taekwondo, do you want to try it? I was like, mm, okay, sure. And then I enjoyed it. Like I wasn't, and I think that's the mistake people make. They go, for example, um, oh, I want to start karate or, oh, I want to start Muay Thai or whatever. And I think that's always a mistake because like where you train and who you're training with is so much more important than the style um i hear that a lot oh i'd like to start krav maga or something super specific but if there's no krav maga school in your area then how are you going to do it the number one factor that makes someone like stick with it when they're training is how close the the, the training space is to their house that's, okay. that's the number one <laughs> yeah thing. Yeah, people like if people have a much bigger chance of not making it to black belt if they if it's like a two hour yeah, yeah transit it's a, to it's a track to just to even get there and back. Right? So like my so, advice to anyone who wants to start martial arts is just go find a school near you, <laughs> do a free trial class. Same thing for wrestling schools. Do a free trial class if they have one. If they don't have one, then that's a red flag right there. And then if you enjoy it and everyone's nice and like, and and that, it works out for you, and you feel comfortable there. Then you're way better off than if you like pick a style, pick a school, and just go sign up. And then it turns out, yeah, you yes, you really wanted to do Muay Thai, but turns out the instructor is not a nice guy at all. So did you did you when your friend said you want to come to this this class? Did you know the difference between Taekwondo and Karate and Judo and? I had not the slightest clue. Okay, none at all. Um. So my, my coach who I like, I, 
I still I still trained up until the school had to had to uh, move and close and eventually close because of the pandemic. Um, like I still train there. We still talk. He's still like a very good friend of mine. When I started training, I was 13. He was, I no, I was 12 or maybe 11 when I started training. Whatever. He was he was 26, so he was a young oh. guy. He was he was nice. He was cool. Mm -hmm. He wasn't. I don't think I would have stuck with it if like it was an old strict man who reminded me of like my that shitty gym gym teacher I had in third grade. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah. it was like a. Like also, what worked well for me is I would not have been into like, um, the, the like over traditional side of martial arts with like the bowing and the speaking and the yeah, yes, yeah. Sir. no sir the school was loose and taekwondo is in the Olymp Olympics it's an Olympic sport mm -hmm. and he was very focused on like the sports side he wanted oh, like, okay. his school was oriented towards competition which is what I like about taekwondo and not just like tradition or training for the sake of training it was a very practical thing and he had a practical goal in mind and he so, like he focused on on the the sport itself and not like just everything around it that tends to take away from sure the experience Did, were you how often were you going at first every single day oh really? i went yeah yeah oh yeah uh that that says a lot about my personality as a whole but yeah. like I, as soon as i inscribed i just I started going every single day um, and then when I was like for the first year I just did every single class that I could and then when I was a year older I was sort of like a bit small to do the adults classes but a bit big to do the kids classes so I started okay. doing both so it's oh. literally all the classes that they would offer and my brother was doing the same oh cool yeah and did you this uh, side note have you ever had to use it in self-defense ever i never have oh, i okay, absolutely nice never girl. have okay do um you, do you ever daydream about that more so no, like at the beginning like no i no i don't and i don't think anyone who like does martial arts like well i'm sure some do but like you know I know what it's like to get in a fight i mean i practice fighting and mm -hmm. like i've gotten a chance like I've never gotten to a street fight with someone I was angry or wanted to hurt me or whatever, but yeah, I, like, yeah. I've play fought around with friends. Sure, and, sure. And, and like I've had, I've had some a lot of dudes fr in a friendly way went, "Oh, you do taekwondo? Let's fight! Come on!" And <laughs> fighting, and I, I've always enjoyed that. And I've always take me down. Performed well, but I've never like, uh, like you once you get kicked in the head, you get a sense for how that feels. And like, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know how, like, in a an uncontrolled setting, how badly that can go. Yeah. And like, I would never, ever want to get in a fight. And I will, I will always do anything in my power to gotcha. not get in a fight. Like, I, putting pride and ego completely out of the <laughs> way, and I'm not afraid to run away and just defuse. Do everything I can to defuse the situation first. Have you happened to see, I'm sure you have, uh, uh, Cobra Kai during this yes. pandemic? Yes. Okay. Do you like it? I love it. I think it's, yes. Is I love there it. anything realistic in like, like compared to wh where you trained, anything like that? No, nothing at all. And, but so that's what I love about the series mm -hmm. is that it doesn't even like pretend or try to have any sense of realism yeah and, totally. and, and the, have you you've watched it i assume yeah, yeah, you're asking yeah. these questions yeah no one has seen this show and hasn't had the feeling of why do they put so much importance on a karate tournament that happened 30 yes, years ago totally like it's, 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 do they have like is part of you know taekwondo they were there um tournaments like that yes there absolutely were tournaments and so and then here's what people did everyone in your high school know that there was, was like that? a tournament going on that weekend so th there was tournaments every every two months all <laughs> around the province uh -huh. and th so the mo the craziest thing about the one tournament is uh -huh. that there's like it's it's one category, one tournament, everyone fights everyone, and let's go. That would never happen. Yeah, totally. Like, Taekwondo Logistic tournaments, and I, I know it's the same for most, like, martial arts, but tournaments where you have, like, 500 kids who want to sign up and compete that day. Uh-huh. 
to find some that are the same level, same size, and same preferred gender is like very difficult. So you end up with like it's not like there's a 400 kid bracket. No, it's <laughs> like it's you have for 500 kids, you have 300 mini tournaments or right, right, like right. two 200, 150 mini tournaments of up to like the biggest one is eight kids. When you can find eight kids the same, yeah, yeah, it's like same ever- level. Did you like have like uh, like did you have like hatred towards another school that was in these tournaments? Like, was there an evil clan of, <laughs> of um, competitors or no? It was so, just um, every school had their personality, definitely. So it, oh. it, this like this mattered more at the higher levels, right? Uh, okay, sure. Black belt and uh, right. So when I talk about like the smallest tournament, I mean color belt. Mm-hmm. For, like, you know. Because yeah, there's a lot level. more belts, and you pair them up by belts, and that's how the levels are. But when you're black belt, then it becomes a lot more, mm-hmm. you know. And generally, when someone competes as a taekwondo black belt, they're going to do it for some years, right? Sure. So, like, most of the people that I fought with, like, when I the year that I turned, like, senior black belt, uh, I had those same, like, five or six guys in my category mm-hmm. for, like, until I until I stopped competing. And, and is, then, it, is it, there's also within an age bracket within that, like within no, like, so, so you uh, could be six, 10 60, or 15 60, fighting 25 year old? is all is adult. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's like you 16 and then you 14 and then you 10. Okay. Uh, which means under, under, yeah. under, and then 16, 16 up you're fighting. So could you be paired up with what's the highest age you've, you've seen? Uh, so, speaking of Taekwondo, getting to very, very specific stuff, people usually peak around, like, early 30s. Okay, okay. That, that's when you get, like, enough experience to be as good of it as you, you're, as good at it as you're going to become. Mm-hmm. And, like, the athleticism hasn't decreased significantly sure, yet. And sure, usually that makes sense. It goes down a little bit. But, I've like, I've fought, like, people that were, like, 40, 40 years old, and they were, like, still performing well. I mean, yeah, yeah. if you're good at it it's are you do you do you consider yourself still learning yeah of course of course um i don't know if we're talking about a taekwondo or wrestling but they're both no, like in, in the same way in the exact same way but mostly for taekwondo it's ever changing mm-hmm. they since since i stopped competing they've updated the rules many many times okay and like the style changes continuously and it evolves and things become different and so you're always learning like fo- focusing on different techniques okay, so just okay. for example they completely changed the point system right so it's full contact but with a, a chest protector and a headgear and when i was competing it was one point to the chest two points to the head now it's uh one point for a punch to the body, which you could get a point with a punch to the body. When I competed, it was very, very difficult. Now, okay. Two for a kick to the chest, four for a kick to the head, and five for a plus one for a spinning kick. Oh, right. Gosh. So five for a spinning kick to the head, three for a spinning kick to the body. So like, just like a front leg jab, mm-hmm. like a lead leg just tap hard enough to get a point was 90% of the points I scored. <laughs> uh, but now like if you if I I'd have to give you I'd have to successfully score that five times to make the equivalent of one spinning kick to the head. So those happen a lot more, which was to make the sport a lot more attractive. They like encourage people here. to do Yeah, exactly. They encourage people to do oh, techniques wow. like that. I'm, I'm really surprised I get I mean I guess like there's other sports like baseball. They kind of tighten the inside a little bit if they want more home runs or less. Yeah. Like I guess you have to, to keep up with the times. But you can look at. I don't know if you're an MMA fan as well. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, you can look at the evolution of that, and the rules have not changed that much, but certain things have completely changed. Like mm-hmm. you've seen, um, well, spinning hook kicks, just like Taekwondo, became really fashionable for a while, and they still sort of are. They like you would have never seen one at all before. Um, who was the first one to do a big knockout with it? Uh, before Edson Barbosa knocked Terry okay. Etam with a okay. big spinning hook kick, then they became a lot more popular. And also kicks to the calf, where people would just kick like the upper part sure. of the leg. Now kicks to the calf become a lot more over here just because someone started doing them and it was really successful, and other people kind of start to mirror that, and then kind of just everything evolves that way. 
yeah wrestling is the exact same way it's constantly changing and you really have to you have to keep up and you have to be like there's no point i think where you can stop learning any of these things wrestling yeah, taekwondo or mma and be like okay i know it so you're successful in taekwondo when did you when did you switch over to like wanting to per, you know pursue wrestling putting your energy into that so it was always kind of um weirdly like it you know i st could start taekwondo when i was uh 11 i think 12 mm -hmm. or something I don't, i don't remember um and then wrestling like you had to be to attend the closest school you had to be 16 years old oh wow that's right yeah. so i i couldn't start pro wrestling until i was that age mm -hmm. and i had like i had already done significant work in taekwondo by then and for several many years i was kind of doing both and they were conflicting and uh -huh. i was really enjoying taekwondo but wrestling after a while didn't seem like it was gonna work out oh as well and so like focus was on a little bit more on taekwondo a little bit less on wrestling but then came a time where wrestling started working out mm -hmm. like pretty well and then it's like do i want to put all this effort and this energy into doing a taekwondo tournament where it's going to take away from the yeah. wrestling and the wrestling is going to give which i think was the right way to go about it honestly it'd be easy yeah, for me God. to say like knowing i would become a successful professional wrestler at some point in my life i should have focused on it way earlier and i wish i would have but like you can't you know, know that yeah right um so how did you was your family what, what were their um what was their input when uh you said i want to kind of pursue professional wrestling wait so did you start when you were 16. yeah i i started training and wrestling i started taking i started training when i was 15. okay yeah and i then trained for like six parents months okay with that yeah they, they well so first of all they wouldn't have had a choice like Again, yeah. Given, totally. given that me and my brother just started doing it when they were seven, and then we started doing martial arts like yeah, very yeah, young, yeah. And then, like we, before I started training, I spent eight years saying that I wanted and was going to become a professional wrestler. So, oh, okay, yeah, and, and I like, I say that as if like, oh, I knew there was no doubt in my mind, but I, I'm sure a ton of other kids that yeah, are pro wrestling totally. fans say, and it doesn't work out for ninety nine percent of them. <laughs> Well, so. I'll let you in on a little thing. I always thought I was going to end up being rich. Yeah. Never <laughs> you know, just never materialized. Right? Uh, yeah. So many kids want to be in the NFL and the, yeah, well, totally. the, the NHL here. but it Yeah, I'm surprised there's, we don't out, have so, yeah. more people going to the moon, all the kids who want to be astronauts. You know? Right? <laughs> it's not just translating. No. So uh, how did you find a, a wrestling school? Was it, again, just something, whatever was closest? Uh yeah so my my brother did and like he so he started training a little bit before me okay he was older. He's older yeah and then the school he was going to which was the idvs school the same school where i teach now mm -hmm. but it like oh. it, it then closed and i went to another school that okay. was barely a school it was for a promotion called mwf and it was more like we would go and set up the ring mm -hmm. on friday where the shows were saturday and then we just like it wouldn't even be like a class per se it'd just be more like learning stuff and wrestling around but with people that could do it properly and i would Were do that like, had you ever run the ropes or taken bumps yet at that point yeah so okay. when my brother started training uh a year or so before i started mm -hmm. um of course everything he learned he then showed me at our taekwondo school so i learned to bump on the taekwondo mats the only thing i had never done was run the ropes because we didn't have access to ropes yeah yeah but like he had shown me the, the like the technique that he had learned to bump and so by the time you else. got in the ring you could for the first time you could take a bump pretty well yeah 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 i could take a bump but again uh we like People give backyard wrestling a lot of flack for like being unsafe or dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, but like, if you're not dumb, <laughs> like you yeah. can be smart about it, and it's fine. Like, I, I I don't know why people like people play tackle football all the time. I was just gonna say fine. that. I mean, um, I played so many like pickup football games where someone like broke their wrist or like broke their nose. You know, yeah, everything um, can be dangerous. Everything can be dangerous. Letting and a like, sixteen year old so drive a car. You know, yeah, like, everything. Right. <laughs> I just ripped my earphones right out of my head. Oh, okay. Hold on. Yeah, okay. Right. Um, 
uh yeah so like even if you're just watching like professional wrestling on tv and trying to do what they're doing which is what me and my brother did on very thick mats and we just uh-huh. you know suplex each other like we weren't doing it properly but we had a good sense for how it feels and how to do it and then that combined with the taekwondo made learning the actual techniques like relatively easy uh-huh. did you have to weight train when you were uh you know early on uh in taekwondo like were you lifting as well or you know i wasn't I wasn't lifting, not for Taekwondo. So uh, Taekwondo is a lot more kicks. Mm-hmm. It's very much about reach. Reach is a huge advantage in uh, in Taekwondo. The best Taekwondo fighters have a very low BMI. Right? Okay. Oh, that really? Any sense, right? Yeah. yeah long long, no, long legs sense. and a far away head so that you can <laughs> reach it pretty easily. Um, Did so you... now, uh, Go on. when I, yeah, so I, I just always tried to stay like as lean and as basically as small as possible. When I was competing in Taekwondo, I caught competed at 140 pounds. Okay. okay. So I would like weigh 150 and then cut down to 140 usually. Did, so um, you had to like like keep, be aware of what you were putting into your body, you know, how many calories and stuff? Um, Yes, but I was not, not nearly, I wasn't good at it then. Okay. okay. Not at all. Um, I didn't have like sufficient info and there just wasn't as much info as there is now. Like I've learned, I've learned a ton about nutrition in the last, you know, several years, mostly yeah. off, like YouTube and a lot of the, like the resources that are available now, which is many in back then. Yeah, it's insane. Did, uh, how long did you train before you got, had your first match? Six months, just about six months. Did you think, um, did you sorry. feel you were ready? I, probably less than six months because I had some like squash matches before then. Just go in, to go in there and get beat up and. Fine. Which was fine. Was yeah. that all worth it? I mean, yeah, yeah. It was not like rough or no one. No, like, but still. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it was fine. <laughs> okay. Um, so then. Do you think I was ready? So I, I think that's a very like relative thing. Who's ready? I mean. Or I was. Rather, did you think you were ready, or did someone else tell you you were ready? Uh, I, I, I had way too much self confidence, and I okay, was, like, <laughs> I, I had no worries at all. And before I even trained for the first time, I was like, "Yeah, okay, I'm good. Just whenever, when it put me in, <laughs> when you're ready." Yeah, but so, also like w- one of the things I learned from Taekwondo was how to like trust a coach and have that. So I was like already used to that which is uh, yeah. like a rough thing when you start pro wrestling and you've never like done a sport you like mm-hmm. you're very much at a dis- disadvantage because there's a lot of things you learn like you learning to be a pro wrestler is very hard there's a ton of mm-hmm. aspects to it but also like learning how to learn and learning how to be coach are two things that are super important and if you can get that in before you start training for pro wrestling that will make it a lot easier so sure like, did you ever have you ever wrestled your brother in a ring yeah, yeah, many, many times. Okay, okay. Just want to make sure that it always happened. Um, so when did you start going out on the road? So in I, Canada. That depends what you mean by the road. Like, I've never toured or anything. It was always just... You've never driven eight hours somewhere? I mean, I have. Yeah, yeah. Many times since. I mean, but I, I started young. Like, I started wrestling, like, six hours away from home and just... Oh. Doing that sort of regularly, and then, like, and were you still did... a teenager at that point? Sorry, were you still a teenager at that point? I definitely think I, I don't know, I don't remember. So, geographically, uh, I don't know how much you know about Canada, but you have like Montreal, and it's like cities around it, which is like up to three hours distance, and then like, oh, okay, Toronto, Toronto is like six. And I can't okay. remember if I wrestled in the Toronto area before then, but I would definitely wrestle like all around Quebec. Got it. And got I know it. like when I, when I was 18, I wrestled in, in Chicoutimi, which is six hours north of Montreal. So way up north. Oh, and wow. Like, we had a weekend of shows there and I would like travel all around Quebec, but never more than day trips. I was always able to get back home after the show. And it's not like it's never like I was like on the road or going away for weeks or months at a time. Okay. No, I, was, like- I was always able to go back to school on a Monday. Like your mom was never worried. Like he's out with all these grown men, and you know they're no. corrupting him. No, nothing like that. Um, okay, so you come to the U.S. before right. you go to Japan and yes. uh, UK and stuff. Yeah. 
So were you just working for Pro Wrestling Guerrilla? No, I started with uh, I started with CCW. They were no, sorry, oh. I I had worked for ISW okay. before in the US, and All then right. CCW started bringing me in regularly and evolve in PWG as well. Mm -hmm. And okay, but then as you well ended as the up... odd the odd place around them. Do you want to quickly address um, the what happened here in the U.S. and then? Where you went yeah, after that? Yeah, you know, briefly. I mean, I yeah. I was unable to wrestle on the U in the U.S. for the past five years, and that like that's why I stopped wrestling in the U.S. because mm -hmm. I was not allowed to, and uh, it was five years, and that comes to an end soon. But even then, like, there's still a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a lot between me and wrestling in the U.S. again, including a pandemic. Yeah, and more paperwork and boring stuff, but yeah, I understand. Yeah. But you were able, I mean, you were able to still work in a ton. So you, you realize, all right, I can't work in the US. What's your plan at that point? So my situation is not not uncommon at all for Canadians. Okay, right? That That's the first thing. And like, I, it's been sort of a discussion right now how hard it is to be a Canadian pro wrestler because you're so close to the US and promoters are like oh come and take those bookings but there's a yeah. there's a danger like uh, but i know so many like all of the best canadian wrestlers that you've never heard of well they, they they're maybe in an almost similar situation to the one oh. i was in where you can't enter the u.s at all um i know so that it's like, very difficult i know that um i can speak for myself and my family saying that we feel safer that you haven't been able to wrestle here in the last five years <laughs> Thank God for the government for for looking out for us for right. you know predators. Like, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so it's a common I it's a common that. type of thing. So yeah. um, I was just lucky enough that instead of just being like having to wrestle in Canada and then not being able to make a name for myself, I yeah. had already had some fun matches, some memorable moments in PWG that mm -hmm. then made me more attractive to. Uh, British and Japanese promotions. Okay. And it's through my work in the US that I was able to work for DDT, which is a promotion I wrestle for in Japan. Mm -hmm. And it's through my work in PWG that Rev Pro in England was the first person to bring me over and then get like get me known in Europe a little bit more so, and get me in touch with WXW in Germany and where I was able to like make contacts in Europe then. So do you do you contact them or do they contact you? It depends. In that case, I, you know, I can't remember. Uh, DDT, it was uh, a person. She used to live in, in Japan, but she now lives in America. Mm -hmm. And she, like, recommended a lot of people to Japanese promotions. And that's okay. who introduced me. And then she spoke to them on my behalf. And then they sent me an email. But, I mean, uh, in Can the last several years, it's probably been 50-50. Like, the amount of places that have contacted me. For bookings, is that great? Like when you get a call or an email, like out of the blue, or is that like uh, good for the ego? <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, yeah, that's what you want. That's your goal is to be yeah. a man. So it helps. Like, oh my god, I emailed this person like four years ago. This is great. Yeah, but out mostly it's a job. Like I'm sure any like any independent. Yeah. Uh, worker Do you get frustrated when like you don't get any response or? You know, we don't have any, you know, work for you. I mean, for the most part, that hasn't been an issue. Like, okay. I've been successful enough that I haven't been, like, hard up for work. And I'm in a very, like, that's not really something I had to deal with. Like, oh, no, like a, a dry spell or whatever. Mm -hmm. I've always been very successful and been able to, you know, negotiate and have that freedom. I okay. like, it, yeah, but yeah, it, if you're asking just for pro wrestlers in general, I know it's very common that people get frustrated where they're unable to find bookings. And yeah, yeah but usually, usually, like, it's about levels, right? Um, when you just start pro wrestling, mm -hmm. you just whatever you, you need experience. That's the, for yeah, the first yeah. several years. Um, you just need experience, which brings me back to Taekwondo and one of the like important lessons I learned from my coach at the time, which was when I started, when I just turned 16 and was going to fight senior, he told mm -hmm. me people don't get successful until they're at least like 19. So those first like three years, they're just practice, do your best. Oh, okay. Just take your very long. helpful advice. Right. It's very, very help, 
helpful advice for me and helped me learn a lot. Which is the same way when you start wrestling, when your your first hundred matches are gonna suck, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, that's unless, a lot of matches. Wow. Yeah, well, if you wrestle once a week, it's if you wrestle twice a week, it's one year. Oh, so, okay, yeah, that's true. It's, it's not so bad. Like, uh, unless you're an Olympic gold medalist already, then it helps. But most likely, it's gonna take you about a hundred matches to figure it out. And people so do that. This- and does for your those... training school do they set you up for your first match? Um, usually, yeah. Usually, you'll get your your first bookings through your wrestling school. But okay, like part of it is also part of wrestling training is also learning how to how to sell yourself and get jobs, right? How mm-hmm. what is the right place and what is the right way to write a message to someone and going, "Hello, I this is my name, this is what I do, and this is what I can do for you." Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's a skill on its own especially when it comes to pro wrestling it becomes like it's it's a muscle that you get better at like that that you work just like anything else but like, more when you start, selling yeah yourself. right exactly um and also like not overselling and not underselling and knowing it's just the right amount like <laughs> listen uh, I'm awesome. i don't have to say anything else <laughs> us. right like, then people are either gonna go yes we know like, yeah, yeah. Uh, however much money you want and but no f- so when i started out for the most part like it was pretty simple quebec mm-hmm. is a it was a very small scene it still is now but it was even smaller then so mm-hmm. like you you do one show there's three other promoters that are wrestling on the show and then oh, i just go okay. hey you have a show then would you mind if i came along and and then it, oh it, so it, that's yeah. so it's like meeting people and making connections and it's networking and getting exactly. known yeah yeah can i ask you about some some of the specific countries that you've worked would you like me to just name all the countries in which i've wrestled oh go ahead let go me try ahead. um i'm sure i'll miss some uh yeah, I, have, I have some yeah canada u.s mexico that's mm-hmm. it for america i've never wrestled in south america though i would absolutely love to because i know yeah, that'd be awesome some countries over there that have a great scene uh ireland scotland england do we count wales as a country yeah why not throw it in there (laughs) (laughs) yeah let's count wales um germany where else in europe i've taught a seminar in spain though i've never wrestled in spain i've wrestled in portugal i've wrestled in italy uh and then i've wrestled in japan i've wrestled in singapore and i know that i'm missing one yeah, I mean, anywhere out, like, not on Earth? Not yet. Not yet. But I but hear that Musk is taking care of that for me. So as soon as there's wrestling on Mars, I'll be there. Perfect. Perfect. So, um... Hopefully I get paid well, in dog coin. <laughs> yeah, totally. Who's uh, responsible for paying for, like, airfare and where you're li- going to live when you're in these different places? Is it so all that on depends. you? Like, the... I, this is another like conversation that comes up every once in a while on Twitter that I absolutely hate. Oh, like, okay, let's hear it. There, yeah, yeah. There's many degrees to that, but like the, you should never pay for any of it yourself. You should always get the promoter to uh-huh. get everything taken care of, and that's the very old school way to do it. And I don't think that's necessarily right, or that applies to anything. Like, uh-huh. um. I think for in the world of pro wrestling, but also from speaking to people that are in in other like areas, it's a uh, negotiation is a lost art, right? And <laughs> I feel like it it always depends. Uh, when I wrestle in Japan versus when I wrestle in England is usually different. Like when I wrestle mm-hmm. in Japan, they take care of one hundred percent of everything. Do they like meet and you at the airport? They meet me at the airport. They pick oh. me up. They take me to where they to the living arrangements that they've set up for me. They're gonna make sure that I get to to my bookings. Not so much for me anymore because I've been there for a while. So now I'm usually the one. I'm I'm the one that when they bring other foreigners, I have to you pick guide them through the 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 Tokyo Metro (laughs) uh, and help them figure that out. But like so, when I wrestle in England, I I much prefer to set it all up myself. Yeah, there's no language barrier. Yeah, um, and it also so when I when you go and work for DDT, they bring you, they take care of everything. I work for DDT, and I would never think about working for anyone else without their specific like permission or sure. unless they bring it up, which would be the same thing if I was in England and someone flew me over and I wanted to take a booking or do something. 
I would have to ask them specifically, like, hey, would you mind if I did this? Yeah, while I'm and here. then like again, I would be paid their their rate. Um, I so my my fiance mm -hmm. is American, and we've okay. been together for I don't remember how many years, but quite a few. So okay. she lives in the she she's a wrestler as well. Oh, uh, her name awesome. is Zeta Scott. She is a oh Twitch really right now. Yep. Oh okay. Uh, Did you guys ever wrestled? Yeah, yeah, we've wrestled. We tag team regularly, and we've wrestled each other a few times. And has she ever lovely, assaulted but... you outside of the ring? No, absolutely. Okay, not. okay, you're safe. Yeah, yeah, I'm safe. Okay, I'm safe. blink if she, if she's right there and she's threatening you. Now, see, All now right, I'm cool. gonna be worried, and I'm gonna not blink forever. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Well, better. I'm extra safe, and now my eyes are gonna be dry, and then that. I take be things fault. literally. Anyway, <laughs> so okay, yeah. um, so like for us together when we go to england mm -hmm. and we've done like long stays there we usually go for a month or two it's a lot easier for us to just book it ourselves get our own place and then just yeah. when we go to a promoter and go this is the fee like to make it even simpler we go this is a one flat fee for both of us oh okay and then they don't so have to worry do about lodging they don't have to worry about the both of you yeah, and that it, some of it goes to the travel and our lodging, and then some of it goes to our our booking fee, and then it all it all just gets wrapped up, and it's much easier for anyone. Which, like, I think that's a very modern way of doing things. Sure. Where like the old school way is, yep, fly me first class and book me a hotel. And now a lot more wrestlers will say, or said before before the pandemic when travel was recommended, uh -huh. um, give me this number and I'll take care of everything. Yeah, and I'll see. And I'll then, meet you yeah. at the arena that on this day. Yeah, people who are used and want to travel, and especially we're in England, like, uh, we get to decide we want to take a week off bookings because we'd like to leave our arrangements and go to Vienna for a week on yeah, vacation yeah. and come back and just a lot freer this way. Oh, that's And also, cool. like, you're not... Yeah. Do you ever, like... Um, do they ever provide you with, like, a translator? Like, so if you go to Germany, did you did you know German prior to going there no i didn't um is the language barrier in these countries is it a no. big thing to overcome you know it's never ever been an issue like oh, okay, not even really? in, not even in japan in japan they sort of like by now i so i've been going to i went to the first time i went to japan was 2016 right it was just okay. about four years five years ago four and a half years ago i think so my oh. japanese is okay now i've since like tried to learn a language and i've gotten okay at it mm-hmm um, do you know any foul first... words in Japanese? Was that? Do you know any like foul words in Japanese? Yeah. Can you insult me real quick in Japanese? Kono yaro. Awesome. All right, go oh, on. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh... Um. So, th 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 there hasn't ever been like a language where, and, and in the ring, that's not even an issue either. No. Is so, like again, r like wrestling is an English sport right uh when i started wrestling in in quebec there would be some old school dudes that had some really old school names for stuff okay but mostly like people know the english words for stuff and that just makes it very easy okay like so when you're going to these places do you know who you're gonna wrestle like before you you know head to japan or somewhere it really depends it, mm -hmm. it's re that's really like 50 50. Can you um, contact the places that you've worked in Germany and Japan and uh, in Portugal and say, "Hey, I'm in a, I'm coming here. Can I get on a show?" Do they reach out to you? Uh, so that that depends of like your name value. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, like you need to give them a reason, right, to to book you. Um, and again, it'll it'll depend of the deal. If you're going to if you're going to see your to visit your aunt who lives in Germany and there's a nearby promotion and you send them a very nice, nicely worded message saying, Hey, my aunt lives in Germany. I'm from Canada. I've wrestled for these places. Here are some matches of mine. Um, I would love to, you know, come to the training school and do a tryout and maybe possibly even get in your show. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Versus, hello, I'd like you guys to bring me to Germany. Please bring me to Germany. <laughs> like jump on the you, bandwagon. I'm gonna be big. You, you need you can do either. They're both fine. You just need to have a different status for, sure, totally. for both, right? 
Um, so in any of these countries, and I'm again, I'm ignorant. So in my mind, it's strictly Japan. Have you ever like gagged on food that was supposed to be going down your throat? I love like every hard? single food. Try any? Will you try anything? Anything. Have you been to South Korea? I have not been to South Korea. No, I would okay. love to, and it's really dumb that I haven't. But again, uh -huh. the schedule I have in Japan is very, very busy. But mm. yeah, I would absolutely love to go to South Korea. Do you have to make appearances as like as well as like wrestle matches? Uh, in Japan, that's more of a thing. Okay. And we're like I I so I've been on like Japanese talk shows and and stuff. Uh huh. Oh, cool. Is that confusing? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Do you ever feel like they're good. making fun of you? You know, no, like, no, okay. Oh, okay. So, no, because I know Japanese culture and I know that like the host is always the butt of the joke. And that's kind of how these oh. TV shows work. It's never the guest or whoever. The guest is oh, always there to just make, make fun of those. It does. And like, I was aware of that, which helped. But so a big part of being a good professional wrestler is being good at following instructions. Okay. Right. If the guy says, take two steps, then step forward with your life le with your left foot then raise your right hand like then you go okay. just the visualizing that and then being able to yeah. do it without flaw is is important uh -huh. um, so even though i have no idea what's happening i know that my instructions are when they point at you come forward take a bow throw a high kick then the host will attempt to grapple with you and you just put him in a triangle choke <laughs> okay. and then, then you walk out and that's that's what i did and nice and fun and that's do, all that do, happened do um it, it, so you'll you'll eat any food. Is that also part of being respectful? Like you're in somebody else's country, or somebody else's guest. A little bit, um, but I so I I love food. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love food, which sounds like a, a like a no. no I thing love to oxygen, say. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean I really love food. I oh, went to sure. cooking school for a year. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I love cooking and I love the idea of food and I love everything about food. And I will watch a million food documentaries and I watch food shows on YouTube constantly. Can I ask you a personal question? Yes, of course. Okay. Well, it's a two part. One, do you live with your girlfriend? No, I do not. Okay. Do you guys, so I guess it's three questions. Do you guys have dinner with each other every night? Almost. Okay. And who's responsible for cooking primarily? We, so... Uh, well, when we do, so she, right now she lives in the U.S. and I live in Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which which makes her seeing each other very difficult. Because yeah, of the pandemic, in but, a three dimensional way at least. Right. She she came over here for a month and a half recently. Oh, okay. And, oh my know, god! Is, wait, is, are you guys planning on being together though at some point? It's yes, absolutely. As soon as, it, as soon as that becomes possible, yeah, we'd love to. Oh. Does she want you to come to come here? Yes. Okay. And I want to come here for the employment opportunities as well. But if that mm. doesn't work out, then we'll figure out another place and we'll make it work. But yeah, it's, it's not um, like you guys are living halfway around the world from each other. Right. But yeah, okay. no. When we when we did live together, we we very carefully chose the meals together, and it was never just that. assumed that you're cooking dinner tonight. No, no. Oh. But she she's she's just as good of a cook as I am. Perfect. Perfect. She knows what she's um, doing and are the fans from all these countries, U.S., Canada as well, are the fans different? Not like who's there, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. cheering uh -huh. the... So you've got is like, it... yeah, you've got Japan and mm -hmm. then you've got Mexico and everything exists on a spectrum in between these two. So in Japan, I don't know how much Japanese wrestling you've watched, but audiences tend to be very quiet. That's what I thought, yeah. Because they're paying attention. And do they and, ever do, do they react for anything? Yes, they do. They will. They will absolutely clap. And when someone someone is down, regardless of whether they're the good guy or the bad guy, that doesn't really apply there as much. Mm. But whenever someone's down, their fans will cheer for them and scream their name. And that's a thing you'll hear oh. often when you watch Japanese wrestling. It's not about who's the good guy or the bad guy. It's whoever needs their help. That's who they're going to help. Okay, and, so there's... Is there... So there's no but like there's no villains like that the that the there, fans are. Um, you play Dungeons and Dragons. I used to. Are you you so you're familiar with alignments? Mm-hmm. 
So wrestlers will have alignments. Okay. <laughs> right? But the chaotic evil guy could very well be the baby face. Okay. But th so that's that's Japan's own like yes. That's the way it's done there. What about well, say so it's, it's sort of evolving everywhere. But yeah, okay, Japan Mexico. and Mexico. Okay. So Japan fans pay attention. They know the wrestlers, they know their moves. They like they they know they understand the significance of moves mm -hmm. and then uh like the same 75 fans are at every single DDT show I perform on. Oh, cool. And then in Mexico, it's, hey, Lucha's in town. Let's go and get drunk. <laughs> okay. It, but, like, they're both very culturally relevant. In Japan and Mexico, pro wrestling is a thing that everyone knows about. But in, in, in Mexico, it's just followed. For the most part, there's a lot of exceptions. But for the most part, like, followed completely differently. And then that gets completely reflected in the style. Where if you watch the, Mexico, the Mexican style, mm -hmm. like, Lucha has a lot less attention to detail and story yeah, in yeah. Japan. But it's all about the big flashy stuff. It's all so about the flashy costumes. and in Like, not in Japan. There's, are the fans heckling anyone? Yeah, like, not, in, not in Japan. Never happens Mexico, in Japan. yeah. Everywhere else in the world happens constantly. Okay, okay. Is it hard to get used to wrestling for fans there are different like kind of that contrast um or getting used to it yeah you get used to it um mm -hmm. like again part of wrestling being so difficult uh is because it's so multifaceted right and a big mm -hmm. aspect of pro wrestling that has sadly probably changed and might change during the the pandemic is mm -hmm. is uh, fan interaction okay and a big yeah. A big lesson that I learned sort of early on um, from wrestling, from working with uh, Kevin Kevin Owens, mm -hmm. right? We had we had quite a few matches, most mm -hmm. notably for C four. But one of the things that he was a master at, and that I like, I hope to mirror a little bit, is his attention to detail and the way that he absolutely he never lets it take away from the match. He never lets lets whatever is happening take anything off track. Uh -huh. But he addresses anything that happens. Oh, he will anything that is around him. He will take, make his own, and use it to make it part of the show. And you, were, did you guys? You guys were tag champions together. That's right. We were tag champions in C four together. In C four, um, how long did uh, did that go on for? How long did I, you guys hold the belts? I think about a year. Oh, okay. so did you guys travel together? We did not. No. Oh, okay. Okay. We, we we simply met at the show and he went oh, his own way. And, yeah. Um, uh, so we we I think we drove down to CCW together once a long time ago. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. No one called me, but that's fine. You guys just being rude, I suppose. But that's fine. I could have been there with you. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. I don't want to keep you much longer. I'm sure I'm in a lot of trouble from my wife and kids at this point. <laughs> but can I ask you um, like five yes or no questions that have nothing to do with wrestling? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll so make them quick. Okay. Four, just four of them? <laughs> well, you Damn. wasn't that the oh. first one? Oh, shit. Now I'm down to like two left. All right. <laughs> I'll get started. Have you uh, ever seen or spoken to a friendly ghost? No. Okay. Uh, can you sneeze with your eyes open? Yes. Okay. For a billion dollars, would you um, start your own porn production company? I'm not saying yes. you have to be in any, but would you do it for a billion? Yes. Okay. Nice. A billion dollars is uh, a lot of money. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Um, do you eat all organs of an animal? Like heart and liver or just like a steak? Do you mean regularly or would I? You know, like, it, w would you? Yes, I have. Okay. I've, there, okay. Yeah, most of I have, yeah. Have you ever eaten an animal's lungs? Yes. Have you ever eaten its soul? No. I'll let you think on that one. Okay, can I, I'm going to ask this fifth question. Um, do you think if um, you and I ever got into a fight, and just based on your training and like my bony frame, my big nose and big ears, do you think you could take me down without breaking a sweat? Yes. Okay. Could you put me in a hospital without breaking a sweat? Yes. Awesome. All right. Well, you answer all the questions correctly, so you're past there. Um, where are you going to be? Uh, are you wrestling anytime soon? No, I have no wrestling plan, but um, 
Two things. I am on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. I'm at Speed Bell Belly. I have a good microphone and a green screen because I do that. And so th- please check me out on there. And then the most important thing you can do, uh, which is even more important than just straight up giving me money, <laughs> is go on YouTube, find my matches, watch them. And if you like them, then share them. Tell your friends about it. Not just me, but independent wrestling as a whole. As well as the promotions that put those matches out on YouTube. Um, that like in the, in the new world order that we have here and the internet running everything. Things like likes and subscribes and follows are worth even more than, than money nowadays. And it just feeds the algorithm, algorithm in a way that we absolutely need. Mm-hmm. So that is the most important and that is the best thing you can do and then if you do have some money go over to pro wrestling tees and buy some uh, some merchandise that's if you have money that's helpful too yeah there's you actually have some very cool designs i was checking checking it out there um do you have iwtv in canada we do oh okay do you are do you subscribe uh, yes and do you subscribe to the wwe network as well uh I personally am not subscribed to the network. I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Um, Just like get... Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you guys, do you um, watch wrestling as a fan? Is it hard yes. to do that? Yes. Okay. You can separate the like, oh, you know, he did this. I would have done this. I'm able to with... do both. I can watch wrestling and just enjoy it and have fun and like, well, having a snack or just hanging out. Mm-hmm. But also most of the times I need to stop rewind film something that just happened and oh. then break down the structure of the match and how it's going and like those cool. are two different modes but i can do both all right well listen you uh stay healthy and stay safe and are you getting married do not do you have a date we do not have a date okay however okay. Please know that when we do it will be the greatest wrestling wedding you've ever seen and you'll all be invited yeah, I, I mean, I would have thought it was weird if you didn't say that. All right, you take care. Um, good luck to you, and hopefully uh, we'll get you on here again soon. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Take care, Mike.